All right, hello, here's the 8.4 notes. Uh, 8.4 is on acid-base reactions and buffers. So the goal in this section, we want to explain the relationship among the concentrations of major species in a mixture of weak and strong acids and bases. All right, now if you look at this, we have weak and strong acids and bases. With that, there's four possible combinations. So we could have two strongs, we could have weak acid and strong base, we could have weak base and strong acid, and you can have two weaks. So uh, we want to look at each of these possible combinations and, and what type of reaction you have and, and how you could possibly uh, figure out some a pH from those types of reactions. Uh, just so you know, some of the, the calculations, like uh, with these middle two, uh, that will be using um, a concept that we'll use, uh, that we'll learn later on, okay? Um, but I'll, I'll show you that when we get there. So anyway, the first one is a strong acid and strong base. So both of these completely dissociate. So this H plus, that comes from the strong acid. The, the strong base will provide this OH minus, okay? And then these two will uh, consume each other and they make water molecules. So um, if you're wondering, well, what about the other part of the acid, like the, the, the chloride in hydrochloric acid or like the sodium in sodium hydroxide? Well, these are, these are net ionic equations those other parts of the strong acid and strong base, um, they're just spectators. So the, the hydrogen and the hydroxide are the only, the only part of that reaction that, that's changing into water molecules. Okay. So anyway, um, to determine the pH of this, um, we just have to know well, what's going to be in excess. Um, if we have equal amounts, then, well, it's just going to be a neutral pH. Um, you know, if it's 25 degrees, it'll be 7. All right. But if we have extras of one of these, well, that's going to drive the pH up or down, all right? So here's an example. Um, we can use the, the amount of our strong acid and the amount of our strong base to figure out, well, what's going to be in excess, and then from that we can determine the pH. So I'm going to switch over to this jam board. All right, so here's that problem. I already have it all worked out because for some reason the recording didn't work the first time. But anyway, um, we want to find the pH. So we have to start by figuring out, well, what's going to be in excess? Well, we can use the information about HCl and NaOH to determine how many moles of each ion we have. So for hydrogen ions, we want to use, we want to figure out, well, how many moles of HCl do we have? So we just multiply the molarity times the volume in liters uh, one thing I didn't add right here is units of liters. There we go. So the liters will cancel out, and you multiply those together, you get 0 0.31 moles of hydrogen. Do the same with hydroxide to, to figure out how many moles we have. Multiply those together, and we get 0.15. Now you can tell by comparing these, we have excess hydrogen ions. So that's going to make this solution acidic. When you have more hydrogen ions, it makes it acidic. So now we can figure out, well, what's the concentration of that excess hydrogen ion? So for that, we're going to take the excess hydrogen moles. To determine that, we're just going to subtract these two because this hydroxide that we have is going to consume the hydrogen ions. So this is going to consume 0.15 moles of hydrogen ions. What's left is 0.16. So that's our excess hydrogen ions. And we want to divide by the total volume because we're, we're taking these two separate uh, solutions and we're mixing them together. So the resulting volume ends up being 200 milliliters or 0 0.200 liters. And then we divide that out and we get the molarity of our excess hydrogen ions. And this is what's going to determine the pH. So now the pH is just negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. We end up with uh, you know two decimal places, so 0 0.10 it rounds off to. So that's how you do that um, with the strongs. You, you figure out, well, what do I have in excess? How much excess is left over? Divide by the total volume and determine the pH from that. Now, if we, if we had excess hydroxide, then you would take the pOH and then you'd, you would just subtract from 14 to get the pH. Okay. All right, I'm going to switch back. Okay, just switching back to the uh, the slideshow here. Okay, so that was a sample problem that we did. 
All right, now the other combinations. Um, this won't take too long because we don't have any calculations to do, but this is the weak acid and strong base combination. The weak acid is our HA, and you know, weak acids only, only partially dissociate, so we're going to keep it as the acid molecule. And this is from the strong base because it completely dissociates. So what happens is the hydrogen ion gets transferred over to hydroxide, makes water, and then what's left here is this A negative, this is our conjugate base. So um, we want to look at, well, what's in, what's in excess and then how, how will that determine the pH? Well, this first situation, if we have excess weak acid, um, that means we're going to have some weak acid left over and we'll also have some of this conjugate base. Now that's what's, what's called a buffer solution. When you have a weak acid along with its conjugate base in the solution at the same time, that's called a buffer. So we'll learn about buffers later on, so, so don't worry about it so much right now, but a buffer is something that uh, resists changes in pH when you add like a small amount of acid or base. Um, and then we, can, we use this Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to figure out the pH in that situation and we'll cover that later okay so don't worry about this one so much right now all right the next situation uh, if you have excess strong base so that means that the the excess hydroxide will drive the pH up and we can figure out the the pH from how much excess hydroxide you have in the total volume all right now the next situation is a little tougher if you have equal molar weak acid and strong base that means they've completely consumed each other and and what's left in that container is not the weak acid nor the strong base but it's going to be the conjugates of both of those so when you have this situation what determines the pH is the conjugates of our weak acid and strong base all right now the conjugates of strongs are too weak to affect the pH so the conjugate acid of a strong base is too weak to make it acidic. So you know, that was in the notes earlier too when we talked about the strong acid and strong base. The stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. The weaker the acid, the stronger the conjugate base. So when they flip to the other side, they kind of flip their strength too. All right, so then the, the conjugate acid of the strong base is too weak to do anything, but the conjugate base of this weak acid is strong and strong enough to make it slightly basic. So you would expect a pH, you know, like around um, eight or nine, not not a, a big departure from seven, but a little bit higher than what you would expect for a, a neutral pH. So the conjugate base of this weak acid is strong enough to make it slightly basic. Uh, we'll see that concept when we talk about titrations too. So. So we'll, we'll cover that. I know I went through it kind of fast, but we'll see that concept uh, the next several sections, all right? All right, the next situation is a weak base and a strong acid. So here's our weak base. Here's our strong acid. The hydrogen ion gets transferred over to the, the weak base, and it turns into this HB+. Plus. This is going to be your conjugate acid, okay? So... We have the similar situation to the last uh, type of reaction. If you have weak base and some of its conjugate acid, again, it's a buffer solution, and we'd use Henderson-Hasselbalch. Again, don't worry about that now. If you have excess strong acid, that's going to drive the pH down, and we can figure out the, the pH based on the excess. Um, if we have equal molar amounts, then it's about the conjugates again. Well, the conjugate base of the strong acid is too weak to do anything, but the conjugate acid of this strong base will make it slightly acidic, like a five or six, somewhere maybe in that range, okay? All right, now the last situation, you really don't have to worry about, um, so this would be your weak acid, this would be your weak base, and we don't have to do the calculations to determine pH with this situation. You could, in case you're wondering, you could use the Ka and Kb values and, and figure it out that way, uh, but we don't have to do that, okay? So this is the, the reaction, but don't worry about any, any sort of pH calculation, all right? And most of the pH calculations, like the, the, that Henderson-Hasselbalch equation that we talked about, we'll, we'll get to that a couple sections down the road, all right? But that's all for the notes for 8.4. All right, have a good day.